Five reasons not to open a barber shop. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this title has a little bit of a clickbait to it. I'm not gonna stand there and persuade you not to do something. It's just a little bit of advice to some, for someone from me who actually owns a barber shop and I've been in the industry for a long time now. So, let's get straight to it. Too many people are doing it. Barber shops are opening every day, sometimes next door to each other. It's because it's a physical service in comparison to, let's say, small businesses what need to be online only. Well, not need to be, but they can operate online only. So with that, the shops that are left, you've typically got salons, nail bars, barbers, anything like that. Your staff turn into your competition. The whole staff topic is a very, very important thing to address in your barber shop. The industry is very saturated. There are a lot of barber shops opening. Uh, that gives the chance for barbers to kind of float between different places, have better offers at bigger locations. Big brands that are coming into the barbering world, they're going to offer things that you necessarily won't be able to. By better offers, I'm talking about a better commission rate, a cheaper chair rent, or education, something like that. That could be the better offer that they're receiving that you cannot keep up with. Also, 80% of the time, when you employ someone as a barber, they want their own shop. So down the line, you are on a ticking time bomb of when they are going to open up more than likely near you because that's where the clientele is built up and they're going to set up shop and then they become competition. Profit margins are not that big in a barber shop. When comparing to other businesses about the amount of work that has to be put in, it's very low in the profit margins. By the time you've paid wages, bills, insurance, all those kind of things, you're left with very little. It's a lot of work for the social media, the financial management, the management of your staff. There's a lot of work involved. There are a lot of people who are not even barbers who are just trying to employ barbers to run their shop. And it doesn't really work too well if the foundations of the business are not quite right. Ideally, you want to be a barber yourself, be able to jump in when things go wrong. It's important that you stay on top of your game with your social media, with keeping things fresh, and making sure your staff are doing a good job. The reason why social media is so important is because that's your portfolio to demonstrate what you can do or what your shop can do to potential customers who may be coming in to visit. The first thing they're gonna do is check out your social media. The fear and stress of uncertainty. There may be times when you open up for a week and no one comes in or very few people come in but you've still got bills to pay. How to overcome how many barbers there are. There isn't a lot you can do about new businesses opening. However, if you're a skilled barber with a big clientele and you're offering something that is above the standard barber shop, this can put you ahead in the leaderboard. Think outside the box and focus on solving a problem for a customer, not providing one. So if the barbers in your local area are only offering appointments, then maybe you should consider something like a walk-in service or the same the opposite way around. If you know everywhere's walking, then maybe you could offer a booking system. So you're being that little bit different and you're being convenient for people, which is what people want. They want convenience, they want the problem solved, I get haircut, what's the easiest way to go about it? That's the best way. You could offer different services. You could offer nose waxing, I don't know, hair washing, not a lot of barbers do that, all, all that kind of, Whatever the services are in your local area, pin them down and then add to them. Offer more, offer more than just a haircut, just a skin fade. Offer as much as you can, and that way you're attracting a broader audience to come to your location. The best way to deal with the staff situation is you need to focus on retaining staff. What can you offer to keep them on board and with your brand? Offer a good commission percentage or offer a real good rate of chair rent if you prefer to be paid that weekly. Listen to your staff's ideas and bring them on on new ideas and new things for your shop. Listen to them because the more people that you've got input is gonna be a better output for the overall running of the shop. Include them in a lot of things let them have their say and listen to most importantly, give them a reason to stay working at your shop. The best thing to do is think outside the box on how you can increase income to the business. Whether that's a vending machine whilst people are waiting, you're still going to be selling stuff, high-end products with big profit margins on them. So you're going to be making a lot of money per item sold. It's not just about selling haircuts, you need to be selling a lot more. Even down to now, there's a lot of barbershops offering service where new barbers can come in and learn from them. 
like almost like a PT session. Now this is good because you can use your existing skills to teach someone else and earn money from it. So you could close one day a week on a quiet day, Sunday, Monday, use that day to open up as an academy maybe or something along those lines and teach people how to cut hair and earn good money in the process. This means you again, you're not just relying on cutting hair to make an income. You're diversifying your business with multiple streams of income which keeps you afloat during times when things might be up or down. Like any other business, you need to delegate specific time to your financial reviews. You need to sit and work out what's costing you money and clean it up. You need to be the best of your game all the time. Delegating certain jobs to the right people will save you a lot of time. For example, if you use a laundrette service where they collect and deliver your gowns, towels and all those kinds of things, that's going to stop you from having to run on your days off doing it yourself at home. Next is social media. If you're someone who's not good at social media or you do not have the time to consistently post every day, then it may be a good idea to consider hiring a social media manager. This is going to cost a fair amount of money, but it will sure pay for itself if you get a good one. You want to be consistent and stay ahead of the game on social media. It's a very competitive place. And again, that is the place of where potential customers are going to be coming to view you before they even enter your shop. Things like this do cost money, but you free time up to then make more money. So rather than spending time running around trying to do everything, delegate the right things out and then choose your time to specifically focus on making money, nothing else. This will keep things efficient as possible. This is something that could be a smaller problem if you have good money management. For example, December is usually the busiest time of year, but January is usually quietest. So if you correctly organize and manage money efficiently, you can use that December profit to carry you over through to January and then back to normal in February so you can keep the ball rolling and keep things going. In business you set up, the same point applies. There is always fear and uncertainty that you will not be getting business. But this is what separates people from wanting to do things and actually doing them. You've got to ride the storm and stay consistent and doing the best that you can do. To summarise this video, it comes down to the fact that whether you can weigh up the pros and cons and offer something that you feel that you can make it profitable. If not, then maybe it will be a good idea to invest something that may be a little bit more passive or will not require as much physical manpower than what a barber shop will do. Or maybe a little bit less competition. Especially if you're not even a barber yourself, it may be a good idea to look at other things. But whatever you decide to do, make sure you're giving it 110% and you're thinking outside the box and you need to think about what you're doing differently compared to everyone else. The goal of this video is to get you thinking differently about the industry from an outsider's point of view. For someone who doesn't own a barber shop, just one who wants to. I just want to give you a little bit more information about how to do so. If you're a barbershop owner and you have some important things to let other people know about what you think about the industry and how you've overcome different things and advice you give, please leave a comment down below and let's share some knowledge together.